Okay, so I've just popped in some white key areas. Yeah, so I've just put in the little bits around the eyes, strong bits there. Just softened up the ears a bit. Um, so yeah, just putting in these little white marks. Just around here. They're quite strong, these bits. Keep on the outside of those dark marks there. Bit thicker. At this point, I'm not pressing that hard. I have been pressing quite hard up here. Just getting the basic patches in. Just looking at shapes really. These are quite white on the edge. Put those in. Light isn't very good here so that isn't helping really. Just guessing it. So this is how I do it, just sort of put the shapes in, then kind of blend it a bit. Till I did this, I didn't realise how much I drew like this. Push the pencil a bit really, rather than try and guide it, I just go for it. Just get it in the right vicinity and do it like that. Right, that's going to be a bit pinky in there, so I'll just go very lightly on that. Just looking at the, literally at the direction that the fur is going now, so it's kind of going across here like this now. I've done a lot of looking at cats. I still need to look at the picture, get the direction going right. So as you can probably notice, I'm looking at the picture a lot. Just how to carry that through there. And yeah, this is like this. This is a lesson I learned from Colin Bradley. Twist your pencil. It gives a good effect. You keep your pencil sharp. I do these are pretty hard these pencils. I've been using the uh, Caran d'Ache pencils a lot which are softer. Pigments very good. These are harder, these are quite quite fun really. So now we're gonna go up here like that. really been trying to get more loose with my drawing rather than look at all the tiny little hairs and details. This is much more fun. Much more fun. It's good. Quicker. 
more fun. I think it looks better. That's just my opinion. I've been trying to get to do this for 14 years. Because uh, I was getting bogged down with making sure everything was perfect. And, um, you know, I can do that, but it's not very exciting. You don't need to do it like that to make a really good picture, I don't think. In fact, I think pictures come out better when you don't do that. They're more spontaneous, they've got more... They just look like you've had more fun doing it. And then it's got to come through to the person that's looking at the picture that might want to buy it one day. Does it look exciting? What does it do for you, you know? Um, is a perfect picture going to make you feel um, inspired? I wouldn't inspire me, although I thought that's how you had to do pet portraits, get them perfect. Well, I don't think you do. I also don't cover the paper a lot either, like a lot of people do. If you, paper, if you get the right colour paper, you can use that colour. This is why pastel paper comes in all sorts of different colours, because that's how it's designed to, to work. That's going to go over those bits a little bit. Just, just blends in a bit. Yeah. Most of us know our cat's hair goes at the top here. Don't have to look every second. Just feel it really. Yeah. Make sure those hairs get up there a bit because it's because they do. Just gonna check the ear there. Uh, Quite light, quite white there. Just wipe the edge of the pencil there. That's what I do. good. I like the look of that. I like it looking like that. Let's bring it over a bit. All those bits are darker but a lot blending. looking at these bits there and of course got quite a few white bits kind of across there Yeah, the reason I put these bits, these little grey marks here is just to make sure I've got the direction right. Of course, this is, um, this doing this bit here is much quicker than putting in the shadow bits, as you can see, it's much more. Just, if you get everything in the right place, then you can have a bit of fun with it. Really go for it, get those whiskers. 
Ofen. You get a bit of a hard edge to that end there. Yeah, they're quite soft. These are going up here like that. And then we've got some bits coming down there. Right, let's do this. Now, this edge here, I've got this line quite a little bit wrong, it's more straight. Faces. Right, it's just slightly rounded it here. I've got a bit strong so by putting on the white first it's gonna um, just weaken the pink when it goes on of course. Okay we've got a nice bit here that comes out here. It's quite thick. See you can see the just about see the white mark I put there and then the other side's the same. That's the other thing I, I don't do anymore. I don't keep to one bit, you know. I used to start here and work across. Um, I don't do that anymore. I just go where I fancy. It's quite nice to do that. Again, it's more fun. And I don't know, also, when you've just done the other side, it's kind of nice to do the other side, I think. Right, I've got these going down here. Do the well, bits yet because the pencil gets too black on the end. So we'll just carry on doing the, the main bits. Now, this is all very fluffy here, so I'm just going to go very lightly over that. Just make it very fluffy rather than just a, a 
quite hard here but you know it gives it a nice strength I think because this is a very strong looking cat he's not a fluffy kitten is he we want some strong marks going on I think it's very much a case of looking at the animal and then just trying to get there a feel for their personality and then just you know getting it on the page there it's quite nice Yeah, if you do it wrong, just, well, not in quite the line of the cat, just take it out, give me a finger, like that. It's the best way to do it, I think. That's up. Definitely up. And we've got some nice whiskers coming out there. This is a bit grey there. Yeah, they're not white, but it's very fluffy here, so it would do a bit of this there now. Gonna need to stop and sharpen my pencil, I think. Gotta be careful with this because it can scratch paper. You get the wood on the paper. You do get a line in it, and I know a lot of people put lines in on purpose, but if you get a line in the wrong place, it, you can't really easily get rid of it. I'm not good doing these bits. Again, I'm just being very careful of getting the line of the, the hairs in the right direction. Really important this is. 
you get them in the going in the wrong direction, the cat won't look real. Um, although it's not actually dead on, the cat will look real and lifelike. As long as you get the hairs going in the right direction. Right, so now this is all a bit fluffy at like the other side there. Well, I need to dim the pencil. Just colour it in a little bit. That's what you're doing really, isn't it? You're just colouring in. That's all. I think um lot of pretension goes on with art. It's not hard. It's, you know, it's just being observant, I think. It's just learning to observe. That's the most important thing you're doing, really. It's just, there's a hair going through there. Yeah, just learning to really pay attention to these kind of details. If you do that, the animal's always going to look right. So you can imagine how quickly you can bring a portrait, you know, get get it done. These are all coming out this way. I've got a little, tiny little mark there that needs to be left. That's part of the nose. So I've just got to be careful not to go over that. And these aren't that, these are just about the right kind of uh, thickness as this pencil is at the moment, so that's why I haven't sharpened the pencil, I'll just do these now. That's his little pink tongue. See, I'm just being careful not to go over these little marks because they are the marks of the nose. They are really outlining where the nose is, so just be careful. This comes out a bit more like a fan here. It's a bit more rounded there. And here. Yeah, it's coming out a bit more back here. A little pink bit on the edge there. I'm gonna just where the nose finishes, so I'll put a bit of pink in there. Okay, okay, we'll leave it there because look, it's getting dangerously near the wood. Okay, see you later.